Good morning, traffic safety expert Trooper Steve here. We're doing what we do every single day, at least when we can, right? Um, it is a beautiful Thursday, and we are talking specifically about safety around large vehicles, specifically semi trucks. You know, I I said in the web article, but I say it a lot that our commercial motor vehicle drivers are scrutinized so often, right? And what do I mean by that? They have a standard that is so above and beyond what it is for you and I to go get our driver's license. Meaning, they have to take extra tests. They have to adhere to different standards out on the roadway. And if they're driving a commercial motor vehicle, there is a completely different book of laws that also govern them commercial motor vehicle laws. There are federal uh, standards that come into practice and the Florida Highway Patrol has a branch of that uh, called the Commercial Motor Vehicle Enforcement Division, our CVE troopers. Uh, believe it or not, they don't even need a reason to pull over a semi truck. Uh, they can just, I want to stop that truck and do an inspection. So I don't think a lot of people even understand the stress that our semi truck drivers are under sometimes. So it can be rather interesting. So I figured instead of coming out, talking about all the stuff we talk about all the time, let's hit the road and check some things out and see what it's like to be out here on our roadways uh, with large vehicles. Because at the, if they have to maintain such a high standard, maybe we should help them out a little bit, right? while being around these incredibly large vehicles. Now, I'm not saying they're perfect all the time, but what I am saying is most of the time it's vehicles, cars, trucks like mine, results one, that are causing the problems for them. And you know what? I'm gonna say it. They deserve a little grace. What do I mean by that? If you can cut them a break, give them something to slide into when it comes to some space out on the roadways, then we should be doing just that. Our commercial industry when it comes to transportation out on the roadways, at the end of the day, those men and women who are driving every single day are the ones that allow us to live the lives that we have, getting the commerce all across the state and of course all across the country. So I figured we'd come out here to the highway, uh, drive around a little bit, find a truck here or there, and then drive around that truck. We'll pull off and we'll talk about some of the safety things that we need to be aware of when driving around such large vehicles. Whoa, pedestrian out on the highway. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Extremely dangerous. Haven't seen that in a while. I almost want to let FHP know they got a pedestrian out here at the four. Just be careful, guys. But when it comes to our semi-truck drivers, think about it. They're spending such long hours in the vehicle. They're getting products, merchandise to and from wherever they need to go. Why would we not want to like help them out a little bit? So think about it. How often? And I know I would, there have been a time and place I've been guilty of it too. But I can guarantee you right now in the life that I live and the things that I've learned as a trooper and as your traffic safety expert, I do my best to stay away from large vehicles and give them the space that they need. Almost like, like a wild animal, right? We want to allow them to remain wild. We want our tow trucks, we, we want our semi trucks, our large construction vehicles, just let them do their thing. Give them the space. They're not gonna squeeze into tiny spots if they don't have to. So we wanna make sure that we're working together out here when it comes to uh, our tow trucks. I mean, I keep saying tow trucks, or semi trucks, large trailer vehicles, commercial commerce type vehicles. Things to, we gotta remember also is they don't see everything. If you think you have blind spots, imagine what it's like pulling a large trailer or something like that. Uh, what I would like to do, I'm gonna actually pull off so that we can wait for a large vehicle to pass us and uh, then we can talk about it a little bit. Uh, my goal at this point is to get to the Turkey Lake Service Plaza so we can talk about a few points, things to discuss, and then visually see that on uh, some of our larger, larger vehicles. 
Sound good? I like it. So again, if you're joining us this morning, it is a gorgeous weather day out here. Uh, just truly beautiful. Clear skies, roadway's not too bad. Candace uh, gave us some great weather this week, at least reported to us some great weather, some stuff coming in on Sunday that we need to be aware of. But so far, so good. All right, so if you're curious, we're eastbound State Road, f like, whoa, where am I talking about? We are westbound State Road 408, approaching West Colonial right now, and then we're going to head south on the Florida Turnpike. Um, if you look up ahead, there is a tanker truck with their hazard lights on, and if you see that, you already know something's wrong, right? So you want to give that tanker some distance. Why they had their hazard lights on and not their turning signal, I don't know, but look how close this Mitsubishi is to the front to the back of this semi uh, this large transport vehicle look how fast this guy's coming up my gosh get off my on her phone eating tailgating like crazy and these are the kind of people that give everyone problems still on her phone look flying by But then if she was stopped, she'd be like, what's the problem? Tailgating, no signal, on your phone. What else do you want me to write you a ticket for? Oh my gosh, job security. All right, we're gonna head south here on the Florida Turnpike. I love these ramps. I feel like I'm in a fighter jet sometimes. Sun's gonna be in our face, but I'll switch the camera so we're inside the cab so you're not blinded at home while you're getting ready or wherever you're watching from this morning. But if you are joining us, we're talking big vehicles, uh, large trucks and things like that. And on the turnpike, we're definitely going to spot some of these large vehicles. I'm going to put my sunglasses on so I can see. All right, we're southbound on the Florida Turnpike at the 265. Puts us just south of the 408 coming up just north of the Turkey Lake Service Plaza, a huge plaza out here uh, that is the main rest area. It's also the headquarters for the Florida Highway Patrol Turnpike Division, uh, Orlando District. There are a few headquarter buildings from here all the way down to Miami. So hitting the 265, and you can already see traffic flowing pretty good out here. No major issues, things flow good on the turnpike. But the big thing is when you're out here, you have to be situationally aware of all the cars around you. You're moving at 70 miles an hour with hundreds of other vehicles to include some of those trolls that like to dart in and out of traffic. Uh, we're gonna change lanes, come out here to the right center. And coming up on uh, a few large vehicles here in just a second, we're gonna be able to talk about a few things. So for example, right now, inside results one, if I didn't have all these amazing cameras here, this one to see forward, this one to see back, I even we haven't even have side cameras all around results one. And it really helps us limit our blind spots. Also remember, Florida move over law, got red lights up here on the shoulder, you need to scoot over. And that's a prime example of an FHP commercial motor vehicle trooper conducting an inspection and it don't look good because he was blowing a lot of exhaust. Those troopers are out here to maintain the commercial standard so that we don't have any problems. They're an extremely proactive detachment or upper or arm of the Florida Highway Patrol and they are still Florida troopers just with a specialized uh, kind of approach to things. Just like a sheriff's office has vice crimes and stuff like that they have focus on commercial motor vehicles. So let's talk about it. Here, we've got a large vehicle here in the right shoulder. I wanna make sure that I can, the driver can see me, right? So if I can see his mirror off to the right there, the driver can see me. So you want to avoid these blind spots as much as possible when around them, because if they can't see you, they may maneuver in a way that could put you in danger or in return, they may not move 
because they're just not sure and that's a big thing. So stay out of those blind spots. Large trucks and buses, huge blind spots around the front, the back, and the sides of the vehicle. So big, big thing you want to uh, watch out for. We're gonna change lanes here so we can come up to some other semis and we can see what's going on. And then of course, passing a large vehicle, you wanna do it safely. So although I'm doing 70 and a 70 on the nose right now, I want to make sure I'm looking at these vehicles. Can they see me? Are they going to change lanes? And you might be thinking, that's not my responsibility. It is. As a driver, you want to watch this stuff because let's look. As we approach the side of this large semi-truck, they've got huge mirrors and mirrors to make sure that they can see you. Sometimes these do have blind spots. So you want to make sure that you're visible in these mirrors and if you're not, for example, with this truck right here in front of us, right now I'm in a blind spot. So I'd wanna not stay here and I'd wanna speed up so at least they can see me, okay? Also, passing safely. So I've been, I've now passed that semi truck. And I don't wanna just cut over. I wanna put my turning signal on. It's on for a second. And then I come on over. I want to give that semi truck driver the opportunity to see me, let them know, hey, I am going to pull out in front of you, and then conduct that change of lane safely. How often do we see drivers in and out of traffic just because there's a little space in front of one of these large vehicles and we feel we can just take that space? That space is not for us as much as we, we want it. It's not something that, uh, I'm being nosy because I thought she was on her phone. Um, that space is a safety buffer for these large trucks so that they can stop, so that if you stop short, they're not cramming into you. So you wanna be cognizant of that. That also ties in, do not cut large vehicles off. For example, dump trucks, right? A lot of construction here in Central Florida. This dump truck driver is required to have a commercial motor vehicle license, okay? They are aware of, of the safety standards that are required within their vehicle and what it takes to operate this vehicle. So let's get up next to it. And you see that space in front of it? It's enough for me to get over, but is it the right thing to do? Probably not. So we're gonna get up next to this. And as we approach this large dump truck, things can get stressful. You need to be aware of what's going on. You want to be visible to that driver. And first and foremost, I do not want to cut this driver off. Thousands of pounds, right? So you see the driver there behind us. Say I'm in the right lane. Say there was a vehicle slow in front of me. I want to let this driver know well in advance that I want to get in front of him. I would turn my turning signal on for at least a minimum of five indicators. No, There's no law that says that, but five indicators is what I say. So it gives them a heads up, I come on over, boom. There was zero delay in the flow of traffic. What do I mean by that? I didn't have to slow down, the truck driver didn't have to slow down, and no one around us hit our brakes. We're working together, right? They're out here, you're out here, we got to work together. Okay, so let's continue southbound. We're getting southbound on the Florida Turnpike and uh, things running pretty smooth this morning, no major issues. You're joining us this morning, we're talking about teamwork around large vehicles, specifically semi-trucks with trailers. Something to keep in mind also, this isn't, okay, real quick, I am on a huge racing kick right now, whether it's Daytona, whether it's uh, the Rolex races or F1, I have been bit by the bug and I'm obsessed with it. So I've been watching a lot of TV uh, related to that. There is no, you're not catching any speed out here using the tailwind of a semi-truck. If you're following a semi-truck too closely, you are asking to get bit. What do I mean? You are asking, whoa, 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 we're getting some major slowdowns here, guys, slowdowns, whoa, whoa. So you gotta be observant, because this semi-truck, 
would have not annihilated all these vehicles if it maintained its speed. It changed lanes quickly, came out here. That is things that we need to be aware of. That just happened to us. I just had to get on the brakes because you just don't know. They're avoiding the collision and coming in. Give them some grace. Give them some space. You can stop so much faster than these commercial motor vehicles are. And it's up to us in order to make that work, okay? So we're gonna hop on to 528 this morning. That, that woke me up. So good one here, you wanna stay back, right? So when you stay back from it, you're allowing that driver of the semi truck to physically see you. And let's be, let's be realistic here. Huge tires, right? To some case, these tires are the size of some vehicles when you put them all together. You don't want this vehicle to kick debris up on you. So you, you want to keep a nice distance. Uh, tailgating a truck is extremely dangerous and can cause some major issues anticipation we talk about this with a lot of different things right I try to tell you guys don't just stare at the car in front of you why because at that point if you're staring at the car in front of you and they're on their brakes it's too late I want you to stare at the car in front of the car okay because if that driver is getting on the brakes and you're focused on that you're then able to anticipate so what are we gonna swing into swinging into those turns right anticipate the turns of a semi truck understand every time they turn it is going to be significantly greater than what you or I are doing in our cars okay it's not just a simple I am making a right turn absolutely not they have to swing extra wide because they're pulling such extreme cargo that they've got to be prepared so they don't end up on the sidewalk and stuff. So we're going to uh, hop onto here to 528 East. Traffic's a little back, so I want to increase that following distance, right? This should be interesting because this is where impatience happens. So we'll see how it goes. I do have some warning signs now on the truck that says this vehicle is now live streaming, but sometimes people don't care. Sometimes that might make someone else be a little bit more patient. And that's what brings me into checkpoint number six. Be patient. Trucks and buses have operating restrictions, guys. They're not able to do everything that you and I do. Uh, look at this clown. Just going to squeeze right through. Thank you. Just going <laughs> to... People don't care. This guy don't care. Thank you, Durango. Appreciate you, sir, your kindness. Be patient. My sixth point of this talk. Even with each other. Yeah, him and I are under the exact same laws and we're governed by the exact same traffic laws, but you gotta also remember when it comes to buses, commercial motor vehicles, they're restricted in doing certain things. So you have to be patient, give them the space that they need. So we're going to hop on eastbound 528. Sometimes they use technology like speed limiters. So yeah, the speed limit could be 70 mile an hour, but a vehicle might be governed at 65 miles per hour and that's why they're in the right lane. You can't be mad at them for going slow. They're out of your way. Okay honking, driving aggressively, in and out of traffic is not going to make anything faster. If anything, you are going to bog traffic down. Okay? So really good things that we need to be aware of. Let's get back out onto the highway so we can check out a few motor vehicles. I just saw an FHP trooper pass us out on the main line out there. But even when merging, you've got to be careful. Like, look behind us. There's a large motor vehicle coming up behind us. I want to be aware of that, right? But Steve, it's not even close to you. I don't care. You need to be aware. So we're going to put our turning signal on. We're going to move over. We're going to mingle in with traffic a little bit here. All right, I'm going to move into the center lane. There's a left express. There's a left lane, center, and right. I like hanging out in the center lane. Why? It gives me options. I'm allowed to 
move to the left if I have to. I'm allowed to move to the right if I have to. And this gives you the ability to maneuver throughout traffic safely. If you're gonna go below the speed limit, obviously I need you up in that right travel lane over there, all right? So as we're cruising out here, things flowing pretty good. If you're joining us this morning, we're talking the importance of driving around commercial motor vehicles and how we should be really sharing the roadway with each other. And we went over six points and uh, we're gonna pull over here in just a second and talk about those six points. Plus, I'll throw in a few extra things that we should be doing on a normal basis that it is my job to make sure that uh, I tell you. So let's get over here on the shoulder. We're gonna exit the roadway a little bit, pull off on the shoulder out here, and we're gonna wrap this up. So what did we talk about, right? We talked about a few things. First and foremost, stay out of their blind spots. There are no, we call them no zones. These are areas that you do not want to be around a semi truck. Obviously too close to the rear, obviously way close to the front. Uh, there are portions on the rear flanks of the semi trailers that they can't see you. Thing to remember, if you can't see the driver in the mirror, there's a high likely that they can't see you. So nice and cool, right? Second, pass safely. Aggressive passing. I heard this term from bike law a few years ago called punishment passing. It's when you get so frustrated at someone that you pass them aggressively real close. Who do you think you are? Why would you do something like this? So large trucks and these buses do have severe blind spots and you need to be very cautious of that. Uh, don't drive in them. Slow down or speed up to avoid those areas. I'm not saying you do drive aggressively. I'm saying don't hang out in these blind spots. Uh, don't cut too close. Number three, why? Think of the reaction time. Average is about 1.4, 1.6 second reaction time. Uh, it's, it's like the standard of what we use for human reaction in uh, investigating crashes. And think about that. If, we're, if that's the reaction time for us in normal cars, what happens if we're carrying thousands of pounds of cargo like these trucks going down the road? They may be reacting on time, but then the momentum, the uh, inertia of that stuff moving is gonna cause some problems. So do not cut semi-trucks and buses off. Cutting too close in front of a vehicle is dangerous, especially dangerous at higher speeds. If you move quickly from either side, you're likely to be in a blind spot of one of these drivers, okay? Number four, stay back. Give them space. If you're so close to them, they are not going to see you, okay? So if they have to hit the brakes, you're going right to the back of that. Also, for you, us, these vehicles can kick stuff up from the roadway. Yeah, they have to have mud flaps and things like that that are required, but this is going to possibly cause damage to your vehicle, could cause a crash if you're following too close, and at the end, this ain't NASCAR, we're not getting any uh, tailwind off of this. And number six, anticipate wide turns. These vehicles are huge, y'all. I think Results 1 is a big vehicle. Our semi-trucks are massive, so you want to be super cautious of what is going on out there. So I'm going to try to catch up with this guy real quick, and we will go and end this up. So as we're out here, you can see all our highways, no matter what, have large trucks on them. So we want to be super careful. I'm going to wrap it right here with you guys as we pass this nice uh, truck. I love the fact that he's in the right travel lane. Really appreciate that uh, because at the end of the day, they're moving at the speed limit. A commercial motor vehicle should never be exceeding the posted speed limit. And I want to make sure that this driver can see me. This spot, they can see me. Let me show you a no zone. If you tend to be, if you're a smaller vehicle and you get close to these tires here, you could possibly be in a no zone. Let me show you another one. Right here, another no zone. The upper left side or the upper right side. You want this driver to be able to see you, okay? So my point for all of this today is teamwork, teamwork, teamwork. 
we see fatal crashes on our roads every single day that can be avoided. And uh, it's up to us to really do that. So I encourage you, do your research, uh, have patience on the roadway, understand that these drivers are under extreme restrictions compared to you and I when we're just driving. Even right now in results one, this is not governed under a commercial motor vehicle. So I don't have to do certain things. These drivers, their hours are logged when they're behind the wheel. There are certain roads that they're not allowed to go on. Hence why sometimes they drive a little slower in areas because they're trying to avoid certain things. So please be safe out there. I really hope that we can uh, work a little bit better together out here as we're driving here in the state of Florida. You know, Orlando's crazy. Orlando is crazy when it comes to driving, but we do it to ourselves and it's all 100% avoidable. So you guys have a great day. Please drive safely. Um, it's a beautiful week. Every crash is avoidable. And at the end of the day, I just say everything I say that maybe someone will do the right thing. So I love you guys. Have an amazing Thursday. I will be back with you guys tomorrow. Wear your seatbelts, please. Have a good one.